Hi, my name is Rachel and today I'm going to um, dump a bunch of ranty info in your lap about Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. If you don't know, this is a prequel to the Hunger Games trilogy. That was written like over a decade ago by Suzanne Collins and I love the Hunger Games books. I love the Hunger Games movies. So I assumed that when this came out that I would like it too. Wrong. Incorrect. That's a no. And now it's getting an adaptation. The trailer dropped and I went to go see a movie. I don't even remember what I saw not that long ago and I saw the trailer for this and I just sat there shaking my head like no, that's a no. Who asked for that? Who asked for this book? Whomst is responsible for this nonsense? I asked for a Haymitch prequel, okay? I wanted a Haymitch book. I don't care how snow got to be snow. Thank you so much. But here we are. So this book is about the president who is president during Katniss's time. And it's, it's not his origin story. It's just like some shit that happens to him when he's young before he starts on his road to actually becoming president. It, he, he has always been this way. He has always been shit he remained shit and he died a piece of shit okay and this is just a really weird book okay and it's also very different I felt from the Hunger Games and I just I really hated it it was different in not any way that had any value I understand like tonal shift when you're doing like a prequel because obviously we're in a totally different time period but this was something entirely not what I had hoped for when it was announced that this book was going to be about President Snow I I completely understand people's reaction reaction. Like, wh why? <laughs> you had so many opportunities, so many places we could have gone and you went there? Why? And I thought that, you know, maybe, maybe it could still have like some value to me. Mm -mm. This book got one and a half stars for me. Okay. I, w what I was hoping from this was that I would, it would add value to a world and a story that I already love. Right. And it doesn't do that. What I love about the Hunger Games is that you get really into the games because it's a heart racing thing. Right. So Suzanne Collins really does a great job of making you um, terrified while reading it. It's, it, if, it, there's like a great sense of urgency and that was lost in Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes in a way that I think would have been there if we had done say Haymitch's story. I love the political commentary, the political scheming of the original trilogy and the war commentary. I, I really loved watching the rebellion, the hope of the rebellion, but also like the very dire circumstances and the somewhat scary circumstances of the rebellion. The way that they came up with their uh, strategies in the rebellion, how no side was without um, um, it's it's people doing shitty stuff. No side was particularly all good or all evil and Katniss watching that was so incredibly well written. Even within the rebellion people being so inhuman to each other and I, I really love that that exploration of that gray area because I think that, that is true to how war plays out. President Coyne of District 13 was like heading this rebellion but was she really a good person? And you, you ask these questions of like how, how do people end up there? How do people get there? How far are are people willing to go for doing what they think is right? How far will you go? How far is too far? There's so much done there that I felt was like truly remarkable storytelling and exploration of theme and I loved it. Everything that I loved about the Hunger Games though was not present here in Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes and it sucked. Um, I am going to tell you exactly what happens and it's gonna be spoilery so like we're getting into like nitty-gritty today. I don't typically do non-spoiler reviews here. Um god this book was long as fuck for no fucking reason. The Hunger Games was so those were all so short. So like why why was this so fucking long? You know I used to have a copy. Do I still? I don't think so. I think I got rid of it because I was so mad at it. Yeah I'm pretty sure it's gone. Yeah she's gone. She's gone. She's gone away. away. Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes is during the 10th annual Hunger Games. Okay. Katniss was the 70 something -th Hunger Games. 70, 74, 70. Yeah. Coriolanus Snow is our main character. He just turned 18 and he is like nervous about his future. He's from what was a like well-to-do family. They were wealthy, they had power. Basically there's hardly any of them left except uh, Coriolanus I'm just gonna call him Snow. Cousin Tigress, which it, if that was supposed to be a cool detail, I did not care. And his grandma. And their family mento, what? Mento? Motto, wow, is Snow always lands on top. Cool, you're only gonna hear that 50,000 times. Their family is like basically in shambles because Snow's mom died and his dad was killed during their district's failed rebellion. So part one is called the mentor. Guess who's gonna be a mentor? Snow. He's preparing for the reaping, which if you remember, 
the raping is when the capital selects two different uh, kids from each district to be the 24 tributes for the Hunger Games. So he's getting ready for the reaping. And the capital has made it so that students are going to be the mentors. So you remember like Hamish was Katniss's mentor? The capital students are going to be the mentors this year. And they're doing this for like a political reason, right? And Snow is like, oh, I got paired with the girl from District 12. Gross. And of course, District 12 is where Katniss is from. So he gets paired with this girl, Lucy Gray, who is a 16 year old and she is a singer. And you're gonna listen to her sing a million and a half times. And she's like, you know, laying on the charm cause she can sing. She says that she's not actually native to District 12, but she's like a traveler who travels around the United States singing, or the, 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 the Pan Am, the, the Pan Am States uh, singing. So yeah. So part one is like the lead up to the actual hunger games the 10th annual hunger games and you see how the tributes are treated and you're introduced to this character named dr gall who's like really disgusting and really loves her mutts which are also present in the hunger games she creates these like genetically enhanced snakes that are going to go in the arena and at the end of part one the mentor snow's life is saved by lucy gray in a bombing like done by terrorists. In order to pay her back, she's like, help me win the Hunger Games. So while training her, which was the most boring, I mean, this whole book is boring, but I think that that was the most boring part of this book. He's like, wow, I'm starting to fall in love with her, even though you're like, wow, you're disgusting. Are you really capable? Um, Because I feel like you are just a horrible monster uh, who is not capable of love. So yeah, part two rolls around and you get to see how like incompatible they are, but <laughs> Snow does not see it that way. And you know, it's talking about like the, the the class setting of, of Pan Am and how different they are because of their different class status even though he is not as well to do in his family as he used to be he, he's still a higher class than her and therefore is treated better. Uh, the Hunger Games happens and you basically don't really see Lucy in the games you see the games through snow. Most of the some of the tributes are already dead by the time you get to the the Hunger Games because it's different than it is in like Katniss's um so the the people who are still alive they go do the games and Lucy survives and it's because Snow helped her take out the composite competition by poisoning other people and they are found out and they're accused of cheating which I guess technically they did although can you really cheat in the Hunger Games and he's gonna get in trouble in part three he is sent to the uh, place he hates the most District 12 the backward disgusting district that he doesn't want any part of and he is a peacekeeper now that's like that's what he has to do he's like this is no better than if i were killed I'm like okay then die <laughs> nobody cares this book is long as hell I feel like I'm dying and his old rival Sejanus Plinth is there and Sejanus is like obviously becoming part of the rebellion he's trying to rescue a prisoner and get the fuck out of town and there's this whole plot that involves Sejanus but also involves Lucy Gray's ex-boyfriend Billy who is currently dating the mayor's daughter Billy and the mayor's daughter get killed in fact Snow's the one who kills the mayor's daughter one of the rebels gets the weapon and then it gets arrested by peacekeepers and Snow is basically like I have no other choice but to join up with Lucy Gray and become part of the rebellion I suppose not that he gives a shit just that he's always going to do like whatever he feels like his best way out is and in the end Snow betrays Sejanus Sejanus gets hanged but because he supposedly loves Lucy he can like go with the capital and you know be a hero uh, because um he betrayed Sejanus or he can be with Lucy. I don't really understand what happened in the end. It was very odd and convoluted and very confusing to me. Something about like they go, he chooses Lucy and they end up going to the like traveling, one of like the, the areas where the travelers that she's apparently part of are living and they find the weapons that the rebel previously had hidden before he got arrested by the peacekeepers and he's like, I can, I I, can, I think he was like I can turn in these weapons and then Lucy it wasn't really clear like what was going on in her head I guess Lucy like somehow even though he didn't really say anything sort of understood that he would like he he was he he was possibly going to like he, he 
he maybe could have been betrayed like it was so weird I don't understand and then he like like they separate and she he shoots at where she he thinks she is and you don't find out if she's alive or dead it's basically like she suddenly found him suspicious they separated he maybe killed her we don't know and then he gets rid of the guns and then he goes back to where the he, like he he goes and be, is a hero he goes back to the capital in the epilogue he attends university dr gall who makes these snakes that were like really important to the the book like takes him under her wing and he's even adopted by sejanus's family who he betrayed and they like give him money and stuff and he thinks about you know lucy and he's like i don't like that loving her made me feel so vulnerable and in the end he's like i'm gonna be president i'm gonna i'm gonna keep the hunger games going and i'm gonna poison this guy who was friends with my dad who's like in the way of of him being in power which is you know like, you know the poisoning thing is is something that we we know about from the hunger games and like i guess it's supposed to be like here's how i got my start poisoning people which is something i don't really care about i was i i i guess like i i would have preferred seeing snow's actual rise to political power in a way that like we would see other opponents vying for presidency. Uh, I also would have preferred seeing him and Dr. Gall working together. Like if we're gonna have a villain origin story, just go all in and show like the most disgusting shit. I don't need to see him falling in love and then maybe possibly he killed the girl at the end. Also, by the way, Lucy Gray is the one who came up with the song, The Hanging Tree. Cool, I guess. I didn't need to know that. The way you don't, you don't see him question anything. He was the way he was from beginning to end. And I just don't care about that. I, I didn't even care about Lucy Gray. She was so flat. She didn't have any arc. She was just there. And I don't understand what she liked about Snow. Like what the fuck happened? He was creepy and, and gross. She went through this whole games and she didn't have any trauma afterwards, which was very odd because that's like the whole of Katniss is like understanding how these games, how her life was traumatic and how that affected her going into the games. And then her life after the games was so affected by that compound trauma. We didn't even really see her in the games. Mostly we just saw saw snow. It's almost like this was supposed to be fan service, but like for one particular fan. And to that person I ask, are you happy now? I'm so disappointed that this was not in any way like the actual original trilogy. It was just sort of like Hunger Games meets Manic Pixie Dream Girl, I guess. And I don't care. I don't care about her history or her songs. I that's not what I loved about learning about this world that Suzanne Collins cultivated. I think that it, it would have made a lot more sense if it wasn't like <laughs> she just dropped off the map at the end. All of a sudden she sees the gun. And she's like, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe he's doing something nefarious actually. But instead it's just like, mm, he might have shot her and Lucy Gray has never heard from again. I was hoping that either like she would be part of the rebellion and had been like, I don't know, onto him all along and have like an actual person personality been playing him the whole time that's what I was hoping for but she had no character arc like that there was no reveal she was just flat there was no ups no downs she was just flat the whole time I was kind of hoping like maybe she accidentally gets killed by the rebellion and then he's like oh the rebels killed my Lucy Gray and then we get to see like how you know again just like in 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 Katniss's time the rebellion has casualties that they're responsible for as well and like what effects that has but no we did not I don't understand the the choices made here uh, at all. I would love to have seen literally any growth or direction with her or Snow. You don't have like a decline or a descent or even like an, a, a going up and going down. He just, they were who they were from the beginning to the end. And Snow in, in his case was just, I'm shitty in the beginning and I'm shitty at the end. I didn't expect to like him, but I did expect to like understand him better. It, it like, it, it doesn't even do that like basic high school psychology thing where it's like, is it nurture or nature? Like, it's just, it's just snowy shit. Like, uh, great. We know, we know that. I already read the original Hunger Games trilogy. This book does not need to exist. It, it doesn't even matter. Nothing mattered here. And all of that, like, that stuff that was supposed to be fan service, like, wow, we get to find out why this, I don't need to know why that is the way, that that's not the stuff that I want to know about the origins of, of, of certain things in Pan Am. That's not the stuff that I was asking for. There was no serpent, what purpose served by this book? I didn't learn anything that contributed to like my overall enjoyment of the world that Susan
Suzanne Collins built. I didn't learn anything I needed to know that would like further enrich my experiences having read The Hunger Games. Nothing I read here made me want to go back and reread The Hunger Games. It was just like random tidbits and Easter eggs that I immediately forgot after I shut the book. And this was all just sort of like random backstory. Why did I need to know any of this? I, I wish that there had been as good of commentary here as there was in The Hunger Games on things like propaganda and war instead of this was just like instead what I got was a waste of paper and got to learn where that hanging tree song came from. Cool. I gave this one and a half stars and it's hard for me to even fathom doing that because I love Suzanne Collins and I don't just love The Hunger Games, I love all of the Underland Chronicles books, her middle grade series as well. She's a brilliant author so what the frick, what the hell happened here? I realize not everything can be a banger but my god what a terrible time to put out a flop. We could have had Haymitch or we could have seen the first Hunger Games or we could have seen President Snow in his like becoming presidency and you Went with this? But why? Anyways, that is today's video. Uh, Ballad of Song of Roots and Snakes is terrible. I don't plan to see the movie in theaters. Uh, no. <laughs> I have no interest in that whatsoever. No thank you. Hardest of passes. Could not be me. You will not see the movie theater taking my money for that nonsense. No way. Mm -mm. Nope. 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 Have any comments on Ballad of Song of Roots and Snakes? Make sure you leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching. Um, let me know if you're gonna go see the movie down below. Let me know if you're planning to see it. If not, then let me know whose backstory from The Hunger Games you would have preferred to see because there is a whole list of characters I could give that I would prefer. There's like so many stories from The Hunger Games universe that I would prefer to see. Why this? Why this? Anyways, let me know. Comments, questions down below. Like, subscribe if you want to. Patreon's linked down below. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. Hi, it is me. Trash can Rachel and I'm here to say thank you for being a friend to my therapy girls patrons and those are Alexander, Amanda, Ashley, Bubble Tea, Chris, Claire, Des Robert, DJ Krimmer, Emperor's New Blues, Eric, Harley, Jack and Jill, John E, Casey McKenzie, Kate W, Kelly K, Quinn, Lady Kitty Bug, Lek, Lula, Molly, Alice, Peggy Lou, Witch Bitch, Rain, Samar, Scarlet, Shiny, SMK, and Zachary. Thank you all so much for being a friend. And before I go, I have to say thank you for being a friend to my Potato Stars Marxist patrons. And those are AM Angel, Aiden, Alicia, Amanda B, Andy, Angelica, Anita, Artie in the Ninth, Ashley H, Aubrey P, Ava, BB, Blythe, Bookish Barbie, Ray, Bree, Brenda, Bryn, Caitlin, Carlin, Catherine, Kathy, Chris, CJ, Colleen, Courtney, Corwin, Corey, Darren, Deborah, Diet God, Dorian, Dorotea, Ebby, Eden, Elise, Ember, Emily A, Emily L, Grace, Gracie, Hannah C, Hannah T, Harpy Kuro, Hello There Darling, Ilianaka, India Inks, JM Tenet, Jackal All Trades, J is on Olympus, JT, Jen, Jennifer T, Jenny G, Jillian, Jules, Kaylee, Kat, Katya, Kendra, Kylie, Ellen Lindbergh, Laughing Cat Dog, Laura, Lauren B, Library of Scars, Lisa, Liz, Lustful Octopus, Martin, Maddie, Marquita, Maz, Malara, Meow Meow, James, Nat, Natalie, Never, Nicole G, Nicole R, Nicole T, Nikki, Night and Binary, Page E, Page P, Fox Glove, Pixel Stars, Puratheon, Quill, Rachel, Raquel, Rat Sarah, Reba, Rebecca, Ren, Robin, Rowan, Other Rowan, Samantha, Sarah H, Sarah K, Sarah the Bear, Scarlett, Shanae, Shannon, Shayna, Sheena K, Sean, Sierra, Stephanie, Talia, Three Old Dogs, Toast, Trash Can Teddy, Sev, Valentine, and Writer A. Thank you, thank you all so much for being a friend.